see the evolutionary pattern of a number of animal species uh, is available because their fossil remains have been obtained. Now one of the animals that is horse, its evolutionary aspect has also been dealt very nicely because the fossil remains of this animal are available in very good forms and shape. Now some of the characteristics regarding its evolution is given in this uh, slide. Horse evolution has been well documented due to presence of great number of fossils that show the changes over time. We can see that for the last 55 million years of time period, what kind of changes have occurred in the shape and size of horses, its uh, morphology, its internal structure, all such things could be very well deduced due to presence of fossil remains. Then horses mainly evolved in North America and from there they dispersed to Europe, Asia and Africa several times. Many species of horses arose and became extinct and many branches ran dead. Only one line continued and I will explain about that specific line which continued uh, from uh, Eohippus that is from Eocene epoch till now. Horses capable to adapt to their changing environment could survive and continue. See in this table we can see the different forms of horses which continued in such a long period of time and their time of origin. Now the first form of horse was Eohippus which is referred as Dawn Horse. Some people consider uh, other form of horse that is Hierocotherium but both are considered to be contemporary. So it is only the specific genus that is Eohippus which could be considered as Hierocotherium also. And this horse existed 55 million years back and continued up to 38 million years. Now uh, it was present rather originated and existed mainly during Eocene epoch. The second form of horse that was Mesohippus which is referred as intermediate horse. This evolved during Oligocene that is 38 million years ago. The third form of horse was Merichippus which is referred as ruminating horse and uh, it originated during Miocene that is nearly 25 million years ago. The fourth type of horse uh, was Pleohippus that is Pleocene horse and this uh, originated and was present during Pleocene that is 5.2 million years ago and the present form of horse is equus that is modern horse. This originated in Pleistocene epoch nearly 2 million years ago and this horse has undergone further changes uh, up to now. See in this figure you can see the marked variation in this size of these horses. See this left one is Eohippus. This is the ancient form of horse, Eohippus. The other one that is Mesohippus, its contemporary form was Oligohippus. So you can consider both as same. Then the third one is Merichippus. Fourth one is Pleohippus. And this fifth one is the modern that is Equus. And you can see that there has occurred continuous increase in the size of these horses. So continuous increase uh, has been observed not only in the height means changes have been observed in so many other characteristics also but this is one thing you can observe that the ancient forms like Eohippus it was simply to the size of a small fox but now we have present day horses which are quite tall in their size. So such kind of change is one of the changes which one can observe very clearly. 
Now other characteristics you can note down in this table. The first one Eohippus which existed during Eocene that possessed four toes in its uh, four limb. The F and H means four and hind limb toes. So in the four limbs these horses possessed four toes. Four toes means second, third, fourth and fifth toes were present in the four limb and only second, third and fourth toes were present in the hind limb. See the uh, horse being a mammal is expected to possess five fingers that is mammals are pentadactyl. But uh, during evolutionary time period some of the fingers or toes disappeared and in this form four toes were present in the four limb and three in the hind limb. Now its height was 28 centimeter, hardly to the size of a small fox. And then other features, they were browsers. Browsers means uh, they were feeding on soft vegetation. Actually, uh, these horses were forest dwellers. They possessed very less deposition of uh, enamel on their molar and premolar teeth. So they were browsers. And uh, brachydont teeth means brachydont uh, feature is related to the teeth uh, that uh, tells that the deposition of enamel was less over the dentine. The second form of horse was mesohippus. And uh, it possessed three toes in four and also three toes in hind limbs. So second, third and fourth toes were present in it and also three toes were there in the hind limbs. But see the third one, third toe was prominent in both the limbs that is four as well as hind limbs. And their height was 60 centimeter. They were also browsers, bracket on type of teeth were present in them. The third type of horse that is Mary Chippus they also possessed three toes in their fore limb and three toes in their hind limbs. But here if you observe the fossil remains of toes, you will find that second and fourth toes were much reduced in comparison to the toes present in mesohippus. So this kind of marked variation was there. Their size was 100 centimeter. They were also graze, but they were grazers. Grazers means they were actually um, found mainly in grasslands. So they got adopted to feed on harder, you know, vegetation. So they were grazers. They were not forest dwellers. Rather, they came outside the forest and they started grazing in the open grasses. So they possess hypsodont teeth. Hypsodont teeth means highly crowned uh, teeth, uh, which possessed good deposition of enamel. Then the fourth type of horses were Pleohippus, which possessed only one unotoe, that is third. Uh, 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 this one, one means only one toe was present in the forelimb and also one toe was present in the toe means finger, which was much elongated and prominent in the hind limb. So it was third actually toe, which was present in fore as well as hind limb and their height was 110 centimeters. So height is being shown actually in the means as average height. Okay, there could have been even uh, horses of taller height, but this is actually average height. And they were also grazers. They were also hypsodont type. And the existing horse, which evolved nearly 2 million years ago, that is equus, it also possesses single toe in four limb and also one toe in the hind limb. And that toe is actually third uh, toe, which is uh, well hoofed, means a single hoof you will find to be present in the leg. And the average height of these horses uh, is 150 centimeter. They are also grazers and hypsodont type. So these are certain features. Now in this uh, figure, you can see the four different forms of horses like Mesohippus, Merichippus, Pleohippus, and Equus, recent one. In uh, these cases, their uh, skull bone is shown here. So what change you can observe 
if you see the orbit orbit means the uh, portion where i is actually lost that is specific cavity uh, where i is located so the area between this orbit and the tip of snout that is smaller and you will find a continuous increase in the uh, in the area of this pre orbital portion so this pre orbital portion that observed continuous increase the existing equus it is much it is having much elongated portion between orbit and the tip of the snout so this is another important change that has occurred during the course of evolution not only in height but changes have occurred in the uh, type of you know in the structure of toes lengthening of limbs have occurred the uh, rudimentary you know toes uh, appeared in the form of splint bones all such kind of changes have occurred changes have occurred in the uh, type of teeth also in the deposition of enamel also uh, the premolars and molars which were distinctly morphologically distinguishable uh, got uh, much similar in the latter forms of horses so all such kind of changes have occurred but one thing we should remember that we have been able to explain all such things with much confidence only because the fossil remains of all these different forms of horses are available in very good forms and shape and have been well preserved in different museum in this diagram you can see the changes which have occurred in the uh, limb bones particularly in, in the toes here in the ancient forms like hyracotherium or eohippus four toes were present that is second third fourth and fifth in which the third one is still prominent in case of mesohippus the third one is much prominent second and fourth got reduced in size in case of merichippus still second and fourth are there but they are quite reduced in their size the third one is much prominent in case of pleohippus only one toe exists that is the third one and the present day horses equus they also have only third toe being represented now changes in the enamel deposition can also be observed the size and enamel deposition that varies uh, in the different forms of horses here uh, again same thing is shown in case of eohippus see four fingers are seen in the limb but in case of mesohippus only uh, you know uh, here also uh, four toes are being shown but in case of mesohippus and merichippus only third was prominent second and fourth got much reduced and in present day horses uh, only this third toe that remains now if we uh, see the major changes which have occurred during this 55 million years period of time then such changes could be uh, enumerated like this uh, continuous increase in size so this aspect i explained in the beginning that uh, uh, there has been increase in the size of horses from the ancient one till now then lengthening of limbs their limbs have uh, increased in size then gradual increase of third digit in both limbs and the present day horses only possess third digit then perfection of hoof on third digit it means third digit is hooped that got better deposition of uh, hoof structure and reduction in digits 4 or 5 to 1 so ancient forms possessed 4 or 5 uh, digits they were pentadactyl actually but the present day horses possess a single you know finger elongation of neck this aspect uh, uh, we should know that uh, the neck also got elongated so uh, this is another important change important change in the external morphology of horses definitely that would have been resulted due to change in the uh, cervical vertebrae and then elongation of pre orbital region of skull i just said that the area between snout and orbit that uh, experienced elongation then development of high crowns in premolars and molars and most prominent is that premolar became molar like in appearance in later forms of horses it is difficult to distinguish premolar 
and molar teeth because they look very similar and increase in size and complexity of brain see since we have fossil remains of skull bones we can deduce that what kind of changes might have occurred in the structure of brain and we have found that the present day horses they have better cerebral hemisphere region they have better complexity in their brain so in indicating that uh, intelligence wise also these horses have become um, you know more advanced then change of food i'm sorry change of food posture from plenty grade to unguli grade it means initial forms of horses since they possess three or four fingers their all those fingers were coming in contact to the ground and such forms of uh, you know soul is considered as plenty grade but the existing form of horse is unguli grade that is it's only one toe that comes in contact Uh, to the ground so these are the major changes which have occurred in such a long period of time 